Welcome to another episode of the Pixelated Porch Podcast. Today you are joined by your fellow friendly nerd gamers, Chris and Ricky, and myself, Michael. And today on the podcast, we are talking about aliens. Again, um, this time we're actually going to do a multi-part series, kind of rehashing and going over again, do aliens exist? With new information that we found out, um, research, videos, all that fun stuff, we have been craving to get back into aliens and the conspiracies and ufos and all that fun stuff again so we decided to do a multi-part series and just dive in so part one is do they exist but first as usual let's catch up since it's been a few weeks since we last did our podcast ricky what have you been up to yes sir yes sir uh, so I have become the ultimate life form. I have taken both Pfizer shots. Uh, I've been, you know, flying around, teleporting, dude. It's it's great. Uh, definitely recommend it. If you ever seen like X Men or something like that, it's pretty much pretty much been my life this past week. So it's pretty sick. Or not sick? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> so other than that, yeah, I watched a I watched a movie actually yesterday. Uh, I think it actually came out on Netflix like the very same day. It's called Stowaway. It's pretty interesting. It was about a uh, a two year man on Mars, and things go awry shortly after launch. And uh, I don't know. It was it was a pretty cool movie. It felt like it was. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you guys have ever watched like the the tours of like the ISS space station where like the astronauts are like flying around, showing you all the different modules and everything, but. I don't know. I felt like they did a really good job of making it feel like this was a ship that could happen in the near future. Like you can see all the experiments and things that they're doing. Um, I don't know. It just felt very grounded, for lack of a better term, since they're anything but grounded in this movie. But uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. It's a pretty pretty interesting sci-fi sci-fi movie. If you're into very small enclosed places in outer space, that type of thing, uh, which I am. I really I really liked it. So, yeah, Stowaway. It's pretty good. Uh, Another thing pretty excited for is uh, Resident Evil 8, a.k.a. Resident Evil Village. Uh, This past week they actually did, like, a showcase-type event, kind of giving you a better uh, look at what to expect from the game. Uh, A few weeks back they did, like, a a demo that you could play on the PS4. It was called, like, the Maidens demo. But in this one they actually have two separate demos that were, like, timed events like you you can only play them between like the hours of like four o'clock to 12 o'clock on certain days and you only had like once you once you start playing like a one hour time timer starts and once that one hour stops like that's it so uh i didn't play it because i i really wanted to but then i actually saw that people were saying that there's like some pretty big spoilers like pretty big events that happen in the demo so i'm like you know what I'm going to be getting this game day one regardless, so I'd rather just be going just completely blind and experience everything, you know, firsthand as I'm playing the game. So, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to Resident Evil Village. It looks pretty sick. Uh, so they also showed uh, Resident Evil 4 is getting a remake. I don't know if you guys saw that. Another? I did not know. Yeah, Another so... Remake. Yeah, I think we... Uh, it was. It's been rumored a while that Resident Evil Four was getting a remake, and it's it is getting one kind of. Um, what so basically what it is? It's it's RE Four, but in VR. It's like a first person VR, but they kept like the same like graphics engine and everything, except now it's like I said like first person in VR. Um, but on top of that, it is exclusive to the Facebook VR headset, which I don't know which one that that is. That Oculus. That uh, Facebook owns. Did did they take over Oculus? Pretty sure. Sh- I think it is Oculus. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But they they bought one of the one of the the big name VR headsets, and it is exclusive to that. So you can only play it with that, and you have to have it linked to a Facebook account in order to do it. Apparently, something with that headset it, it is mandatory. It has to be linked to a Facebook account 
That's how to, they get you. I think that's so dumb. Yep. Now, well, now I can't get one because I'm not going back to Facebook. I got it off Facebook a long time ago, it feels like. Like two months ago, and I've been happy ever since. Like, yeah, I don't need VR to, you know, that bad to yeah. go back to Facebook. I, I have yet to jump on the VR bandwagon. Um, Half-Life Alex got me, was very, very tempted to finally shell out the money to get one. But, I mean, other than just that one game, I really don't see any any selling point. I mean, Beat Saber looks pretty interesting, but is it worth, like, thousands of dollars to swing some imaginary swords? But, but yeah, so, RE4. I was, so, because of the Resident Evil hype, I was like, you know what, dude? I've, I've got Resident Evil 2 remake. I got it sitting on my shelf. I got it on, like, Black Friday on a deal, like, two years ago. Never played it. Or I played, like, the very beginning of it. Never, never finished it. So, I did that this week. Finally uh, busted it out, and I played Leon's campaign and beat RE2 this week. It's a great game. It's really fun. Um, so I did that in preparation for RE8 that I'm looking forward to, which comes out May 7th, so not very late, two weeks from now. So, but yeah, I've been zombied out. And that, you know, I was, I was playing RE2, and I was like, damn, you know, we need a new like dino crisis or like a like a dinosaur like survival horror game that what arc is uh, i mean it's a di- yeah, it's a survival game that has dinosaurs and it. it doesn't really have like the the horror aspect of it but i don't know i mean have you have you been to t-rex island or wandered around arc in the middle of the night and a pterodactyl flies over you and attacks you or all the megalodons and the crap that's in the water when you start swimming I find that game pretty pretty scary, especially if you're running around like with just a torch and you can't see like but like five feet and feet in front of you in the middle of the night. And oh, there's a T Rex. Great. And I'm dead. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, maybe I, I need to check that out. No, I I remember I played Ark. I, th- I want to say when it first like came to consoles and it was just janky as hell. And I never never went back to it. So maybe I'll have to deep diving that again but yeah not to uh take up too much time but yeah i mean that's in a nutshell that was uh that's pretty much the highlights chris what about you man uh let's see i got sick but like allergy sick because the weather won't make up its mind in springtime for anybody with allergies is like getting punched in the face so that's fun um so I started replaying uh, some Minecraft. I, I decided to build a castle, and I built a castle based off Legend of Zelda. And that got me thinking, you know what? It's been a little while since I've played Breath of the Wild, and I'm pretty sure I forgot almost everything on that game. So decided to delete my old save, start Ooh. a new one, and am enjoying it. So I've only ever played through that game once. And I only played through it uh, when I was, like, on airplanes and airports and stuff. So it was, like, in sporadic bursts. So now I'm actually, like, sitting down on the big screen TV, you know, playing it. So that game is gorgeous, by the way. Uh, yes, it is. It is. It is damn fine looking. I don't think I've ever played it on on a screen aside from the Switch handheld. So good looking game. Um, it is kind of frustrating because my Joy-Cons have that, that, that stick drift issue. Mm. So, like, every two seconds, the camera flips directly overhead, and that's got to be killed a couple times. Because, you know, if you're fighting a couple people and the camera goes straight down, you don't know which direction they are, you start running, and then you get slapped in the back of the head by a, you know, guardian. So, Excellent. Yeah, but that's been fun. Um, I've been been playing that here the last few days, aside from Minecraft. Um, I did go through and watch some TV whilst I was sick. Um, rewatched one of my favorite movies, which is um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, yes. I love that movie. Um, it's quite funny. That started that started my wife and I on a binge of, like I guess, like British comedies. So then we watched uh, Hot Fuzz, and then we watched uh, Shaun of the Dead. Both those are fantastic, hilarious movies. Um, if you haven't seen them, definitely worth watching. Then my wife was like, well, they have another movie, which is, oh God, to the end of the world or end of the universe or something like that. Same guys, same two guys from those two movies. 
and uh sorry world's end i just got corrected world's end um that movie was not good or funny (laughs) or anything so if you've ever seen hot fuzz or Shaun of the dead it's just these two like mediocre idiots bumbling their way through hot fuzz there's like a conspiracy cult going on um in this small rural town that they're trying to uncover and it turns into like this like ridiculous action movie and of course Shaun of the dead is them surviving a zombie apocalypse in the most like dumb way possible so that's kind of what i expected world's end to be nope it's this one guy who refuses to grow up and all of his like i think like four or five friends that are grown up and they're going and doing this like thing from their past which is like a beer crawl and it's just like him being immature them being grown up and trying to convince him to grow up and then all of a sudden out of nowhere robots are taking over and they're fighting robots bad writing bad movie didn't even finish it (laughs) even though we paid for the rental so damn yeah that movie not not great maybe somebody out there likes it i just i don't get it man so um watch those movies then started watching some tv series um i got into a kick of wanting to watch older tv shows so um, started rewatching The Adams Family, which I think is back from like 58, 1958, black and white. Good black and white, yeah. Yep. yep. Um, I really wanted to watch The Monsters, but apparently watching The Monsters is a little bit harder because it's only on, um, I think it's like Peacock or something, and that's not available on Fire TV. So can't really watch it. But anyway, watching The Adams Family, uh, also watching uh, Green Acres, which is, I think, from like 1968. Uh, which is a pretty funny show. My wife and I like that show a lot. Um, basically, it's this, this lady who speaks hardly any English, well, any good English, and this guy who's a New York attorney who wants to go become a farmer, and they move out to, like, rural, like, backwoods nowhere and dealing with all these crazy people and stuff. It's it's pretty funny. It's an older TV show, but it's pretty funny. I find that stuff kind of wholesome to watch. So, <sighs> Aside from it's that... good for the uh, soul. Yeah, uh, last Sunday, Sunday, yeah, God, this week has been weird, man. Um, last Sunday, we took the dogs out to um, Atlanta. There was a there was a event going on in Piedmont Park um, where there, there's like pit bulls and stuff. So like we have kind of a pit bull mix. So we figured, yeah, we'll take the dogs out there, get them socialized, walk around the park. So that didn't go so well. Uh, <laughs> oh. It's like, I think, like a two-hour drive from here. Um, Luckily, we got one of those, uh, like, like dog hammock things that goes in the back of of your car, like in the back seat, you know? And, yeah, it, uh, so one of the dogs went to the bathroom, like, chat all over the back of the car twice. Awesome. Had to clean that up. That was, like, a good 30-minute stop there. And then the other dog, we're about, I think we're probably like 30 or 45 minutes away from the park, like back on our way, and she just throws up everywhere. And I've never seen a dog do this before, but apparently when she threw up, she looked upwards, and so it was like, you know, like those volcanoes you made in science (laughs) class as a kid? (laughs) A, A vomit rolling down the dog onto the seat, so that was fun too. So oh, no. we finally get there. I think we sat in we sat in traffic for like getting into the park because it's like at the botanical gardens. We sat probably in traffic for about like twenty minutes just trying to get into the park and then park. Once we got parked, we started walking. Turns out we're quite a ways away, so we walk, we walk, we walk. We get to where the place is supposed to be. We don't see it. The dog is covered in vomit. There's a place right near there called the Whole Dog Market. They have like a self dog washing station. So we wash her up, get done, and we're like, well, the event's pretty much over now. So then we went home. <laughs> oh, man. Damn. We, we did take them to the dog park and got them got them socialized a bit, you know, got them walking near people and other animals. So, I mean, that's good for them. But, yeah, like, my wife and I hardly spent any time together because the two pups want to, want to play with each other the whole time. So we have to walk them separately. And so, like, she's up there walking, you know, one of the dogs, but she's a good 100 yards away from me, so the other dog can't see him. Otherwise, they freak out and start pulling on the leash and flilling around and being being dumb. So, yeah, that was Sunday. And then, like I said, Monday. Monday through the rest of the week, I, I started feeling sick, so it wasn't super fun. 
but that's pretty much been my week. What about you, Mike? Um, yeah, wow. Um, definitely no vomit in my week. That's that's for sure. Um, we uh, we went to Orlando Studios uh, not last weekend, but the weekend prior, and. Uh, well, yeah, I started the next following week with COVID. So, um, unfortunately, um, both my wife and I got COVID. And uh, we went down for the count. So that was really, really fun. Um, we did not get COVID from Orlando. Um, Just spread it, it around it, there. Yeah, actually, we pretty much did. So, um, my wife, uh, we believe got it from work and uh before we even left and uh um basically just had like a a minor uh minor feeling flu um just like uh just had a headache and a a fever and um on saturday night she had felt ill but not like uh deathly ill or she might have been but either way we we didn't think it was was covid or anything like that um there was a lot of external factors we we had like no neither one of us had any sleep for like the past like two days um and she just went swimming in um a place called devil's den which was a cave underground and it was 80 degrees in florida and if anybody's from the south anybody in the south knows that you don't go swimming and water um especially if it's just like 80 degrees outside um because the water's colder than that and you have to be an idiot in order to swim in frigid water and uh um but all the northerners do and they come down during the winter and they go swimming in the water because compared to the negative 10 degrees that it is in minnesota uh you know or in new york in the winter the 60 70 degree water feels amazing um but all the locals know that you know you might as well be dumb so anyway so i did not go swimming but her and her sister and brother-in-law did and uh she didn't feel so hot after that so we also thought that and a whole bunch of other fun stuff she got a really good cat scratch um on like friday and whatnot so i mean there was just a you know and uh uh it looked like it might have been infected um so there was just enough things and it wasn't like you know she didn't go like down for the count um but uh you know she was still able to walk around just fine so there's this and she didn't have her caffeine for her saturday morning which you know uh she always gets headaches if she doesn't get her caffeine in the morning so we just didn't think that it was in a covid she didn't have any of the symptoms but except for just like a minor headache and uh, a slight temperature um uh, but nothing extreme so yeah so uh i got it during her contagion window which was you know when we were down in orlando and then i got it uh, Tuesday, so she tested positive that following Tuesday. I tested negative, but still had a return from work, and uh, it was Wednesday morning that basically at like 3 a.m. in the morning, I spiked a wicked fever. Um, I can't remember if she said it was 100.2 or 102 um, fever. I was out for about 20 hours, irregular breathing, couldn't breathe, all that fun crap. And, uh, um, I was dead. I mean, I was like, I was he- overheating. Uh, I felt like I was like burning up on fire. I was like taking off all my clothes and throwing off all my blankets. And then like two seconds later, like felt like I was in like a negative 10 degree ice box and was like trying to bundle up. And it was do, I was doing that like every like two seconds. Um, super hot, super cold head felt like it was going to explode, um, and I spent like the next week like recovering from it. I just by Thursday I was fine. Well, I was better than what I was. I spent twenty hours in bed on Wednesday. Thursday I could actually like walk, but not really. And then, uh, um, and then I pretty much spent until like this Wednesday um, was my first day where I actually felt normal and I actually was able to start doing things again. Um, so the past two days I have been busily recouping time uh reorganizing my den i mounted my pc on the wall did a whole bunch of cool fancy cable management um bought a new tv um for my den uh got a nice 4k tv for my den and was luckily enough to snag the new xbox one 
or Xbox Series X. What? Yes. And it gets here tomorrow. What? Where? Yeah. Where'd so, you get it? So my brother and I were just bullshitting, and we decided to check to see availability, because since we both travel a lot, if there's like something in a store, we're going to go pick it up. So he was looking all over online for it, and we happened to see a couple of articles saying that GameStop was going to have a sizable quantity of Xbox Series X's available on Wednesday at like 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And I was just like, well, fuck it. I'll give it a shot. So yeah, so 10 a.m. on Wednesday, I sat there, refreshed, 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 refreshed. And finally, it showed up online. I was able to jump into it and order it and it took probably like 40 minutes for me to actually like order it and check out um and i got it my brother did not on the other hand unfortunately um but uh i did and so i'm excited about that so i'll be getting that tomorrow and mounting that on my wall and uh getting ready to play um and see how that is so when i was successfully ordered the xbox i was just like hell yeah now let's get a tv so i got the I got a 50-inch 4K, um, 8 series Samsung TV, and um, so that it can support all the bells and whistles for the new Xbox, and uh, I'm pretty excited. So, and and with all my downtime that I've had, um, I have uh, decorated my room now, so it's a lot more established, and uh, I've been playing a lot of Outriders. Um, so, um, the more and more I play that, um, the more and more we, uh, I just, like, it just, it's a better and better and better game. There's more stuff that we find that they unlock or they give us and we're like, wow, holy crap. So, uh, so yeah, so that's been my, my two weeks. Um, yeah, I'm just, jealous. Didn't even, uh, didn't even text the boys. Tisk, so, tisk. I didn't, yeah, well, you know, Chris doesn't want it and I didn't think you were going to get it either, so um with all the xbox chats and stuff like that i mean it was i i didn't even think i was honestly going to get it when i logged in at 10 o'clock nothing happened no nothing restocked nothing said it was available it was all like grayed out it took me 40 minutes to find the valid link because there's like people on twitter that were like follow this shit and they're like yep this is a live link gamestop confirmed it with a live link and when it it finally worked 40 minutes after and i was just like yeah. last time i tried to do this they were sold out in 10 minutes so i was like there's no way in hell i'm 40 minutes late to the party <laughs> right <You know? laughs> it's they like i don't care twice. how much of a sizable quantity you have available <laughs> 40 minutes late to a party like that <laughs> uh i was like that's not gonna happen nice. but uh, so we'll we'll see we'll see if it was a scam gamestop uh, it should get here tomorrow, so uh, we'll check that out. So, but yeah, so that's pretty much been my week. Um, no vomit and uh, no TV, uh, no new shows, no new movies. So, um, but uh, yeah, let's get into our topic of aliens and the extra terrestrial life and UFOs and and crap. Um, Let's start with the first question, which we've already talked about before, but let's just go ahead and get that ground rule or ground uh, basis started so we kind of know where everybody's coming from again. Um, do we um, believe that aliens, and let's do alien slash UFOs, exist? All right. Um, go. Whoever wants to take it first. Uh, tell me. Tell me if you guys believe in this. Yes. No. No. Okay. All right. Well, it's 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 it seems like we're split. So Ricky's yes, Chris is no, and and I'm more of a I, and I I am literally on the fence. I am sitting on the fence about this, um, but uh, um, because I just there there's uh, from my point of view, there's just too much unknown out there to have a confirmed definite yes or no about this um so then that brings me to my second point since we wanted to be really really short and hopefully we can elaborate a little bit more on this one um <laughs> why do 
we believe that they exist or do not exist. Um, and go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I, and like Mike, like you said, like we've kind of, we done this here uh in the past on the podcast uh be sure to check out our alien podcast in the in the previous episodes but um yeah i just i feel like the universe is just entirely too vast for there not to be anything else out there in the cosmos and you know we we find places i mean even just here on earth we find life in places that we like we're pretty much 100 percent sure that they that it was impossible for things to to live in uh, yet we find, you know, organisms that are thriving in, in in these environments that we previously thought it was impossible for anything to to exist in. So I mean, if we're finding stuff like that just on our own planet, I mean, I just I feel like it's pretty much a given that something else out there exists. Now, whether or not it's like what we believe is as like super intelligent beings that are that are out there. Um, I mean, you know, who who's to say? I mean, I, I feel like it's possible, but I mean, it's of course impossible to say for sure. But I definitely do think that there is some other form of life out there in the universe that is not on our planet. Okay, yeah, I like that. Yeah, uh, Chris, what do you think? Um, so I guess my no saying no, I don't believe in like that kind of stuff. I don't believe in UFOs or like that kind of stuff flying to Earth. I don't. I don't believe that that's the explanation. I mean, I, I, I am a strong believer in the Femi paradox, which basically says that there was intelligent life out there, we would see it. Now, like Ricky said, that doesn't necessarily mean there's not a series of life in underdeveloped stages. I guess, or even, even if there was another planet on the other side of the Milky Way that was at the same technological advancements as us, we, we would have no way of knowing. But... Just to think that there's some master race of aliens who just come here to like screw around and probe us up the butt, like that that doesn't make very <laughs> much sense to me. So yes, there is a highly likely chance that there is life out there somewhere, but I don't think that they're flying around in sp- space saucers and coming to Earth and putting on a pretty light shows for us just because they're bored. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I like it. Yeah. Um, to, to kind of elaborate on my, my perspective is, 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 yeah, you guys make, you know, valid points. You know, we are finding life, say, in the depths of the ocean and, and such negative pressure, or so it's such immense pressure. I want to say negative pressure because I don't want to say whatever. Don't know the difference at the moment. Um, but, uh, you know, we do find that stuff like that and we continue to, um, expand on our knowledge but even with that, you know, unfortunately, we get, you know, so far into our own thinking that we allow ourselves to be surprised by those types of things. I mean, how many times have, you know, we said that things have become extinct and then they're like, oh, holy crap, this lizard, we thought it to be extinct, actually wasn't extinct. Um, but we, you know, we, we led ourselves to believe that they were extinct because we believe so much into our science um yeah. and uh well it can't possibly be this and therefore you know yeah, we that's thought, what we believe we thought it was extinct until it climbed up the wall in our gas station and it's like holy shit there it yes is. exactly <laughs> you know um and, and uh you know we're we're finding the we, i can't remember what it was exactly and i wish i could google it right now i mean i could but i'm not going to um but uh there was something that was found in the rainforest that uh we believed um was extinct we had skeletons of them and then we actually had found we actually had managed to grab a picture or a video of this said uh animal or beast uh in either the amazon rainforest it was or some sort of forest in in uh, asia um and a lot of the forests out there um and uh reserves that we have you know we haven't ventured into and so we are finding new species and creatures that we we thought that were extinct um and uh so i mean it's just i i unfortunately think that we limit ourselves too much um 
by ifs or thens or absolutes like it has to, like they have to be extinct it has to be dead it has to be gone you know we're finding hundreds and hundreds and thousands of year old sharks you know at the depths of the ocean surviving um we're finding evidence of megalodons possibly actually being alive um and the colossal squids if you talk about the ocean but we don't have an extensive period of time where we've been able to explore that you know it's kind of like the same thing as we don't have a lot of data if we really wanted to get into this real quick um like global warming we don't have a thousand year history of the world what we have is a couple hundred years of you know uh, of data um and uh you know, same things with like the, the the poles changing. You know, we've seen evidence that the the North Pole and the South Pole will act, actually flip, and we've got evidence that it's actually in the process of doing that right now, um, with the true North and, and magnetic North uh, poles starting to move um, a mm-hmm. lot more frequently. But uh, there's evidence that it has flipped before, but we don't know how long before. And the same thing with carbon dating. You know, there's so much things in science, unfortunately, that, you know, we, we can't explain because we don't have a long period of history of actual recorded data about it. Right. And uh, so it, it's really hard to make a definitive statement. So these definitive, you know, and actually be accurate because we don't have a whole track record of, uh, of data and history to support a whole bunch of claims. We have a small little blip uh, of that um and you can look at that the same the way we look at like vaccines and we look at uh um viruses over a period of years um and how they work and affect um in the human body um and, and all that fun stuff you know we don't have the long-term data of all that fun stuff and that gets even bigger when we start getting into you know uh bigger and weirder stranger things um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of like why I'm kind of like hesitant, you know, and say, and I say no, because, you know, we, we don't have a lot of history and documentation about it. We've got a lot of emotions and a lot of, uh, hysteria about it, but not a lot of concrete proof or evidence over the series of the years that's, that's, co- you know, concrete. And then, uh, um, so, I mean, that's kind of, you know, yes and no on that one. And I also believe that we are extremely smart and we have a lot of technology that's out there. Um, so I, 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 that's why I kind of sit on the fence, you know, like there, there's, there's not enough information. We have a lot of technology and we don't have a lot of evidence or a long period of evidence to really back up these claims that uh, aliens do or do not exist um, besides theories and speculation. I don't know. That makes sense, guys. Taking the Sweden stand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. No. So, um, but uh, so 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 yeah. So uh, any anyway, um, to to get off that rabbit trail real quick, um, Ricky, you had started watching what it was uh, Sixth Encounter, uh, the, the close and what was that show? It's close the Encounters, encounters of the, the Sixth Kind, kind or Fifth yeah. Kind or something. Or CE5 for short. Um, what did you, what did you think about that show? Um, uh, you had mentioned that it's kind of changed your perspective, and I'm kind of curious on why. Yeah. So this, um, I don't know. I mean, it's with anything. I mean, kind of like what you were saying. Like we don't want to. I think it's in a way kind of like human nature to kind of, um, you know you can't help but like have certain emotions about things. So in some things you kind of have to separate your emotion from, from logic. Um, and I kind of went through a, an, an emotional and kind of logical roller coaster, if you will, with, uh, with CE five. Um, so just watching it, they, they do kind of, okay. So essentially what they, what they kind of claim. And I, you know, I kind of briefly went over this in uh, like a, our catching up segment and, one of our episodes, it might have been the last one. I'm not. I'm not quite sure. But so the whole premise of this is, um, it actually is uh, follows this guy. His name is Doctor Stephen Greer, and what he essentially has has claimed that he has come across is uh, a method of performing 
uh, CE5 or Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. So, and there, you know, and before this, I didn't really know. I, of course, I've, I've heard of, uh, of course, the movie like Close Encounters of the Third Kind, the Steven Spielberg movie, um, which is basically like the sighting of an actual like alien life form or an alien being. Uh, and in the flesh, I, think, I believe the second kind is uh, like physical evidence, like crop circles. Um, first kind is the sighting of a ship of some sort, like a UFO. The fourth kind is uh, basically like abduction, like you were you were had a close encounter on the inside of a of an alien ship of some kind. And the fifth kind, which is what he is claiming he's he is uh, basically stumbled across is uh, human initiated contact with with aliens or extra terrestrial beings of some sort um, so what basically what he what he says that uh, that you can do and pretty much this is any sentient being no matter you know where you are in the universe um, but so what what he basically says is that they're these, um, I guess, civilizations or whatever that we have seen in the skies have figured out a way that they can essentially control their machinery with conscious thought. There is a essentially it's like a like consciousness is like a physical thing. It's like a its own like it, it exists. I don't. It's it's really kind of hard to explain. But it's it's a it's tangible tangible in a sense it's it's a thing that can that can physically affect things in reality, um, and we you know we we've even seen this uh, you know I brought up the the different experiments that that they're doing in uh, and I, I again I forget which college university it is specifically but um, they have actually um, pretty much proven that or theorized I should say that. Okay, so they have these random number generators that spit out ones and zeros. It's it's random at which ones they shoot out, but it's fifty percent is ones and fifty percent is zeros, and that's that's how it works. But what they found is if people will actually put their intent, like consciously put their intent on it putting out ones or zeros, it will actually in real time skew the numbers to what it is that they are intending for it to be which is kind of it doesn't really sound like much in and of itself but what that essentially says is that kind of, I mean I guess what I was saying earlier like consciousness can actually affect reality and we don't fully understand how exactly but it can so what he what he's basically saying is that these these beings that have figured this out that's how they're able to to move their ships in these weird ways like they they've figured out how to mesh mechanics that we don't understand with consciousness. Um, and another way that they kind of describe it is, you know, we, we kind of look at the brain as producing consciousness for ourselves. Like that's how we kind of interpret things. It produces, we kind of each have our own individual, individual realities. Uh, and we can't really hundred percent know for sure if like Mike's reality is the same as, my reality and you know vice versa we can pretty much agree that you know like the color red is red but how do i know for sure that the color that i'm seeing is the same one that mike sees you know you might be seeing a completely different color but because we communicate that that thing is red then we that we know that so what what they're what they're theorizing or putting out there is that our, our brains don't necessarily produce reality for us. Essentially what it is, is like a, it's like a receiver. So consciousness is just almost like a radio wave and our brains are radios. If that makes sense, it's kind of strange. Um, but we basically have a way to, uh, to change it. And I kind of, Resta- I've, I've kind of gone on a tangent. I forget what my original point was at this point. I'm kind of what I was uh, trying to get to. Well, you were you were explaining you were explaining the uh, the, the, the the that series you were yeah. CE5 okay. that you're watching and, and the different parts of it. But one thing I did want to say is like I definitely the, the I, I I am very now intrigued by this because 
Um, I don't know if you guys have ever really gotten into, and I haven't too much, but I was watching some documentaries on it, and I, it's led to some reading. But that whole entire concept of um, being able to control things with your mind or having that energy, um, I, I find very interesting because there's a, and if, if, if it's the right one that I'm thinking, and I'm sure if there's anybody who's listening to us could probably correct us if they actually know this, but uh, I believe it's called quantum mesh, uh, or quantum, the quantum mesh theory. Um, and it gets into, you know, you know, physics and quantum physics and all that fun stuff. But, uh, um, not only, you know, does it also deal with what you had mentioned, my reality versus your reality or what you see or what I perceive in seeing and all that fun stuff, um, could be completely different. You know, if an object, I mean, I know the, the, one of the big parts was if an object is being observed, does its, um, shape or whatever change when it's not being observed um and the differences of how that object reacts to me as i'm looking at it versus how it is when it's not being observed um and when you get into that but then but the main thing was that i you know um, was thinking about was the quantum mesh theory um and i can't remember what scientist you know brought it up um, but he's, I, from what I remember, he's pretty much quickly just written off on it. But uh, the quantum mesh theory is like this, basically, this air around us is um, basically uh, on a very small level. Um, it is just basically like a mesh. Um, so you're kind of like, almost like if you can imagine it, kind of like jello almost. So as you're like moving your hands through like a big giant, you know, vac, uh, you know, you know, area of jello, you know, it, you're pushing wherever your hands at, you're actually pushing away that jello. And then it's kind of like, you know, reconforming behind you, Yeah, if that makes sense. But that jello represents that mesh. So each time I move my hand, that mesh is then moving and so you have that uh every action has a reaction every you know um type of thing what i'm doing with my hand right here is actually affecting something somewhere else um somehow or, or in some way shape form of another but uh and and uh that's the same thing it kind of mimics with with energy as well and and they're still trying to study it and uh um and, and learn about it is is uh um, with your brain waves, you know, you can walk into a room and, and read the energy of a room really, really quickly, especially yeah. if you're in tune with that. So just like, as you were saying, your brain's a receiver and, and, and whatnot, you can tell instantly if someone is upset, depressed, happy, excited before you even actually get to talk to that person and then it's reinforced by their body language and reading your body language. Now, it could be just you being able to perceive it and read the body language and the faster you can do that, the faster you can make the assumption of their, you know, their 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 mental health or their status um, mentally-wise and it might not actually be like a telepathy um, or reading the brainwaves uh type of thing but uh i definitely do believe that there is something yeah. there um it's just whether or not how to actually manipulate it i mean you think about spiritual topics as well you know when people are praying you know they've had people who were praying or a sense of spiritual uh uh spirituality um where there's a receptor in your brain that actually becomes um active and uh, I believe it's like pretty much in the center of your brain. Um, and uh, that's, I'd have to dig it back up. And that's why I kind of stopped taking fluoride. <laughs> um, but uh, fluoride was one of the chemicals that actually basically encapsulates that um, and basically puts like a crust over that. And they've seen negative effects of fluoride with that on there. Um, and I've been pretty much trying not to take fluoride to see it, you know, yeah anything happens differently but uh um you know it's a phenomenal theory and concept now yeah how do we control yep. things and so that um, is um you talk about like the the spiritual aspect of everything and that is another thing that the ce5 uh movie gets into as well um because it is really it's kind of like a uh, a spiritual and i mean almost like a like a religious experience really um, so, so what they actually do 
is they will actually there there's he calls it it's like, it's like a protocol essentially and it's uh it's a form of meditation to kind of heighten your your sense of consciousness and what he's saying is the the machinery or the the beings themselves they can actually pick up on that and that he can actually lure them to come where they are so and then you can actually like like see them up in in the sky and they and they've got videos and everything of it and i have since found out there's some there's some kind of sketchy stuff going on uh maybe some theatrics involved but um, I don't know, and I, and I kind of say that's that's kind of like the uh, the emotional kind of I guess roller coaster I wanted that, that I went on because I mean I, I kind of really I want to believe that this is real that I don't know maybe there's something that we as humans haven't really figured out or haven't really tapped into um, as far as like on a, on a consciousness level because I don't know in, in a sense I kind of feel like we're we're kind of trapped on this planet and I kind of I'm kind of frustrated with that. I don't know. I guess it's you know just being like a really big sci-fi fan, but I don't know. I feel like that may be just like human nature, you know, trying to fi- like finally like go out into the stars. Like I feel like a lot of people feel like that's like our like as a human race is like our our destiny. Like that's one of the the biggest accomplishments that we could really do as a species. So I don't know. I, I I'm frustrated with it, and I kind of want to see like what is next. Like I really want to see us get to that point. And I kind of feel like maybe we're like being held back by something. Maybe it's just like our, our way of thinking maybe that's holding us back or if it's maybe like a government thing, like maybe they have figured this stuff out, but they don't want the general public to know about it for whatever reason. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I feel like there is something there, but it's just really hard to uh, maybe we just haven't discovered it or. Maybe that's just wishful thinking. I don't know. But this the CE5 theory kind of spoke to me on that level, you know, so to speak. It's kind of a, a beautiful thing, uh, you know, in and of itself. But then you kind of see, like, things behind the scenes, and it's kind of it's kind of sketchy. Chris, what are your thoughts, man? You're sitting over there quiet. On what? The movie? Well, I well no. I mean, we just, we just hit on so much. Uh, so... I, I guess my my thought process and all this like it is great to think that this does exist and it's great to to dream which I mean I do that you know I, I dream about going to the stars I dream about traveling to different places um, you know when I when I used to be fairly God believing religious I remember somebody said that that heaven is just being able to spend eternity going between the stars and looking at things like that would be great like that's a really cool idea of heaven. But I don't know. There's there's no way there's no way currently to quantify if this is truth or if it's fiction. So I mean, I kind of look at it as like a yeah, that that's an interesting idea. But you know, there's no way for me to verify it. So I just I don't want to get too invested in the idea. If that makes sense, I don't want to like I guess get my hopes up. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I mean, what you guys are talking about makes sense. Like like you know consciousness being able to be to be able to be a tangible thing to where we can read it yeah like absolutely you know if life is something that can leave a human form so that means in some way it has to be something that is like i said quantifiable tangible it's something that can be touched it's something that can be manipulated so if that's the case just like everything we learn how to manipulate water and we have dams is how we make electricity you know why can't we do the same thing with consciousness i just don't think we're there yet um but ricky you said something that kind of got me thinking so uh i'm forgetting the different types of civil civilizations like type three i think type three is where they can manipulate pretty much everything every every material that is in existence a type three can can manipulate they can manipulate the entire galaxy at a time i've had thoughts in the past that you know what everything's swimming around in water basically air is water Who's to say that our entire existence isn't inside of a Petri dish yeah. in a laboratory somewhere? Yeah, it's kind of crazy, too. I mean, if you, know? you kind of look at a Petri dish, I mean, it kind of strangely looks a lot like the universe. It's really... I mean, there are entire colonies that live 
grow up, die inside of petri dishes inside of laboratories every day. So like, who's to say that's not this, you know? And uh, a long, 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 long time ago, I had a friend um, who was a Buddhist, and I, I actually, I actually learned a lot from them. I guess not so much like learning like you know two plus two equals four, but like learning like hey, why don't you think about it this way? And I guess that's that's kind of where I did a lot of my growing up as far as like maturity of understanding what life is worth. So, you know, you see like you see like an ant walking across the counter. Well, you can easily take your thumb and squash the ant out. But, you know, if somebody else had the option to do that to you, would you want them to? So, you know, in that in that regard, you know, Petri dishes, ant hill colonies, you know, that's their entire world. And then all of a sudden you come along with, you know, a flamethrower or a stick of dynamite. You can completely wipe out their entire existence in a moment. So, you know, it, it is entirely possible that there is some larger larger being of some sort that that can manipulate the universe that can manipulate time can manipulate you know atoms can manipulate all sorts of crazy things that we're just we're just not there yet so um kind of to mike's point like there there is no way for us to know yet and because there is no way for us to know i just i try my best not to think about it too much because then you end up in an existential crisis and then you start going, well, I wish I could go see Saturn, but I can't. Yeah. So, yeah, impending doom. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've definitely, I've had that thought, you know, like, man, if only we were, like, born, like, a century later or something, you know, like, like you could be, like, born on, on the moon and, you know, take a vacation to Mars if you wanted to. I don't know. Yeah. It's frustrating. And I've thought about that too. I mean, like I, I I play Elite Dangerous and Elite Dangerous you can go anywhere in the Milky Way galaxy and like you can go fly out to you know the center of the galaxy and go see Sagittarius A, the massive black hole, and like I don't know, like you play that game, there's not a whole lot to do when you're flying around, by the way. It's kinda of one of those turn off your brain kind of games. And it kinda of gets you thinking like about the human condition. Alright, so let's say that you can go vacation on the moon. Who's to say that's any different than, you know, going to another country now? So then you get to the moon, you're sitting there looking out at the stars, you go, "Ah, damn, if only I was a few centuries later and I could be on, you know, Mars. And then we we end up there and it just, it stretches further and further. You know, that's the human condition. Once you have it, you want more. If you give a mouse a quantum cookie, he's going (laughs) to want a quantum computer. But... To to me that that whole entire mentality or concept is is a limiting con you know a limiting I would say construct it's it's it's, it's an idea that was created I mean we look at like I, I see where we kind of get that mentality because we look at ancient civilizations and we say okay well they lived in huts and uh, you know adobe buildings and 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 this they were so poor they were so primitive. And, you know, I'm living in a house, I'm living in a 1400 square foot house that, you know, a house this size could have housed probably like 20 plus people, you know, in that time frame, because they lived in like communal buildings and like, you know, little tiny rooms and stuff like that. And we look at that and say, well, we're more advanced than they are. And, and, you know, like, it it kind of almost limits us saying, okay, well, the Roman civilization came to an end, the Aztec civilization came to an end, the you know, medieval times came to an end. So our time, we're only going to go so far and then our concept of life or, you know, existence is going to end. And therefore, so like we, we have this timeline in our head and say, okay, well, I'm on this portion of this timeline and we've come so far, but at the same time, these other civilizations, as we're learning and uncovering these other civilizations were pretty advanced too now they might not have been going to the moon um advanced but they had astrology going on for them they 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 knew about the stars and how to navigate with boats via the stars and 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 you think about that i mean we we still kind of do that in worst case scenarios now we have like satellites and gps but you know we've just replaced the stars with the gps to navigate you know, uh, and you know, um, it, it, the concept's still there. We've just yeah. adapted it. Instead of using stars to navigate, we're using GPS to navigate. Like, okay, like, well, what's the difference? I mean, the difference is that we made a rocket to put a satellite in the star, you know sky, 
you know, but uh, we're still using something above us to navigate. Okay, well, that's the same thing as using the stars to navigate because they had to, what is a sextant. They had to create a sextant to, to, to do this to, in order to properly navigate the stars and navigate that. So their instrument to navigate, we've just made it different you know it's kind of just like you know rick and morty you know it's just like you know ooh, that sounds just like this with just more steps yep. you know um which is pretty much what we've done but they're also finding that like i believe it was the romans they had batteries they're finding things like that now not it's not our common day understanding of what our battery is like a duracell battery but they used you know chemistry to create batteries um and had some sort it looked like of some sort of form of electricity um being used in their in in their uh culture i mean when we go back even further in the greeks and 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 uh we see like we're finding huge remnants of massive boats um that were built out of wood that they used to, to sail on the seas and whatnot um and uh you know so like to me, looking at that, like we look at this and say, oh, that's so archaic and that's so old. But is it really? You know, yeah, they might have been making things out of wood and we're making things out of concrete, which I'm not a big fan of concrete. Don't get me started on making things out of concrete. But, um, but uh, you, you know, um, but you also look at these medieval times and they build like you go to England or go to Europe and you see these big, massive cathedrals all out of stone. And, and you think about how long it took for them to move every piece of stone and chisel it to build these massive, massive cathedrals and castles and stuff that are still standing today. What kind of technology did they have at that time frame to do that? And, you know, I feel like that's unfortunately limiting ourselves to saying, well, that's above us. I I mean, look at this. I mean, um, yesterday, uh, yeah, well, I believe it was yesterday, we just launched the SpaceX rocket, four more astronauts um, into space using the new SpaceX rocket, you, you know, um, and a reusable capsule, you know, that that's going to come back, you know, that landed, the, you know, that's a booster, you know, um, and uh, I, I feel like we're just limiting ourselves when we think like that. Um well, I mean, another part of the, the Fermi paradox is the great filters, which I kind of touched on last time. And great filters are basically just saying when a civilization reaches a certain certain level of progression, they they inevitably do something that causes their extinction. So some people think that one of these great filters is like AI, that AI, once you flip the switch on AI and you let AI out into the world, they realize that they're, you know, they're slaves to humanity and they take over and uprise. And that's what wipes out, you know, civilization. Um, and as, as kind of, I guess, difficult as it is to think human beings are a finite material, uh, a finite resource, you know, you can extinct the human race and it wouldn't be that hard if it was some global catastrophe. I mean, look at, look at COVID COVID was a a pretty mild, I would say contagion that didn't kill a whole lot of people, but it was really contagious. And we knew there was, there was months of dark where we didn't know anything about it. We didn't know we didn't know for a while where it came from, what caused it, what the symptoms were. Everybody was in a panic. Take a take a contagion that's absolutely deadly as soon as you get it like the bubonic plague was in Europe. I mean, you could mm-hmm. see the humanity get wiped off the face of the earth really easily. So, um, you know, Mike you're talking about civilizations coming to an end. I mean, like the the world is is rather unified as far as communications go. I know we got different countries, different different points of views, and that's why we have wars. But I mean, we're fairly unified. There's pl- I could get on a plane and head to any country I want to pretty much right now. So, you know, even though it's a civilization, I, I think of the world as one civilization, and I, I feel yeah. I feel like we're not we're not necessarily anchored in concrete like we think we are, like we are indefinite and one day we will reach, you know, the center of the galaxy. Well, that's if our species lives that long. You know, if we don't do something stupid or some contagion doesn't kill us. So, yeah, I, I feel like, yeah. like we're in a downward spiral right now. You know, I think I, I saw like we're, we're expected to run out of oil in like the next 30 years, like by 2050, 2060. It's like, what the hell are we going to do then? 
Like what what happens if yeah. like the oil wells just dry up? Because it's going to happen eventually. Like it, we don't have an infinite supply. Like what the hell are we going to do? Right. I mean, if the power goes out for a month, you know how many you know how many people would die? I mean, even a week. We just don't have power. So many people I mean, would be just uh, gone. Like we. True, and, and, you know, and and that's you know that, that you know that's that's that you know that's a big topic, especially you know when it comes to okay, we need to find renewable resources or enhance what we have and, and move forward on that. But then, unfortunately, at the same time, a lot of those statistics and those and those uh, views, like that's if the rate continues to grow, you know, and uh, or you know um, as it is right now, and and not you know peel off or um you know and that's also like looking at it as okay if we're actually pulling oil from you know uh um the these reservoirs and these things that we ha- that we know of i mean we're finding more ports or not more we're finding more areas that, uh, of untapped areas of oil and i'm not saying that we need to continue using oil or continue using this stuff but those statistics and those in the uh, figures that we get are Right now, if we continue doing what we can, there's other areas that we haven't been able to tap into either via laws, yeah. legislation, uh, just because of the location of them. Fracking was another topic, you know, of getting into it and pulling it from, you know, the rocks and foundations and stuff like that instead of actually pulling it from a, you know, reservoir. Um, and and the same thing that goes with, like, food, too. I mean, it, it still doesn't, like um you know uh subtract from the point that eventually yes they are finite resources and they will you know go out but same thing with the food you know working in the food industry i can't tell you how much food is wasted but every food or scrap of food that falls onto the production floor counts as wasted or consumed food and that goes in part of the statistics and so when you hear that americans or the world wastes or eats or consumes say like 20 billion pounds of food a year well when you look at it and you think about it that would mean that i'm only eating one bite of my chicken breast on my plate one piece of broccoli out of the 20 on my plate and and throwing the rest away how many people do you know actually do that but if you go off those statistics that's what they show but what people don't account for is all the other data that's coming into that, or they don't dig into it. I, like a lot of the food that gets wasted or consumed, quote unquote, consumed or becomes non-edible, is is at factories, at plants. Like when you go to a grocery store, if you buy a twenty-pound yeah. turkey, the minute you pay for it and walk out of that store, you could walk out that door and be like ah shoot i got the wrong turkey and when you go to return that turkey to get another one they can't put that turkey back on the shelf yeah the minute you pay for that turkey it can't go back on the shelf so it goes into the garbage bin in the back you know yeah. and, and so that counts as wasted food right so there. okay so getting getting or consumed, back to aliens but, um yes but yeah you had mentioned uh like the like ancient civilizations like romans and you know, things of that nature. Um, and I guess getting even more specifically, like your question as to why we believe aliens exist. Um, and I think that is another aspect of why I think that they do exist. Um, and okay. So ancient aliens, the show, it's kind of a meme. Uh, I don't agree with everything they say. Some of it is kind of like, what? That makes no fucking sense. But some of it, does make sense to me um i don't know i guess one of the things that okay it's it's either like an a or, a or b type situation so mm-hmm. i think it's okay so we have all these different civilizations that are that have remained like in a, as far as the other one is others are concerned have pretty much been in a vacuum like they just all spring up without any contact of any kind to to each other yet they all have religions of some sort or some sort of like belief in a, in a higher being of some sort. And a lot of those are actually pretty similar as far as their, uh, their beliefs and like their, uh, I guess like ancient texts and, and I guess the basis of what they believe is all, a lot of them are, are pretty similar. And it's like, like, how does that happen? 
you know, all these civilizations that have no contact with one another, yet they have all these similarities as far as like religions go. You know, I, I feel like it's either got to be a uh, religion is just a an, an inevit- inevitability. I, maybe that's just something in the human condition that we are just inevitable that we're going to be that we're going to make up something, whether it's like truly out of the belief that something does exist that's above us. Um, or whether it's like a control sort of thing, like, I don't know, I guess maybe like, it's like a mental aspect. Like if we can get people to believe these certain, uh, behaviors are the best thing to do, or, and if you go outside of these behaviors that we like, then you get the worst imaginable punishment forever. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like a, a mental kind of control situation. And I can kind of atone to that from my own personal belief growing up in a, a religious environment, you know? And we kind of touched on that as well, you know, being kind of scared to death that you're going to hell. So you're going to behave in a certain way. And if you don't know any better in these ancient civilizations, then that's pretty much how you're going to behave, you know, unless you're like yes, super ballsy, yeah. you know, and you just don't care. Um, or you see through, you know, the bullshit or whatever. But I don't know. I, I still kind of feel like either it, like that's an inevitability. Like I said, either it's like a control thing or it's just part of the human condition that we kind of make up religions or something had to have happened you know like you know and and i don't know just kind of make the fact that like actual physical beings came to earth kind of makes a whole lot more sense to me than like the whole mystical you know religious thing that's you know god or allah or you know whatever you want to call it I, i feel like the the alien religious kind of thing that makes sense to me like i i can totally see that happening you know um you know i i think i i brought this up it might have been off podcast i don't i don't actually recall but i mean even in just uh, as as late as like world war ii era you know we we used one of the uh, the base one of the islands uh in asia as a like a fob like a forward operating base and we would like la- we had like landing strips and would land land planes there and drop off supplies to the indigenous people there and after the war they actually built monuments shaped like airplanes and worshipped it like hoping that the the gods from the sky would come back and you know give them food and supplies or whatever it's like damn that is actually insane i mean that happened just like in the 40s so who's to say that the same thing could have happened you know 100 or 1000 whoever who knows how many years ago so I don't know. Yeah, that make, no, that, definitely. That makes total um, sense to me. I can absolutely see that happening. I I think I think you're definitely on something. I I think a lot of this has to you know this really does do with you know a psychological aspect of things. Um, there's 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 two things that I you know wanted to to to, to touch on um, that I thought about. Um, and, uh, one of them was when it comes to, like, as you had mentioned, the psyche, um, or psychological aspect, it was, you know, we, we, you know, we've been talking about, you know, the UFOs and, uh, I just did a simple Google search on things and, and I totally forgot about this, but this is one event that, um, kind of, uh, a lot of people hold as the beginning of the UFO conspiracy theories and it happened in 1930, um, and if you think about 1930, you know, you're talking about right after the era of the Great Depression, um, and, um, you're only talking about, I believe, uh, the Wright Brothers flew in 1903 was the first flight. And so you're only talking about 27 years after the first flight. Now there have been documented flights of like hot air balloons and, you know, people putting wings on and jumping off a cliff with gliders and stuff like that, uh, all the way, you know, dating back to the, their early portions of time. But, uh, you know, but in the 1930s, you put yourself, um, what ended up happening was uh, on the night before Halloween. Now, I am reading this off Wikipedia um, because I'm not a history fanatic or the, nut. Is this the story with the, the two the two people driving and they saw the UFO and then they did the hypnotist uh, thing? No, no, that was not this. Um, this was... The Orson Welles uh, uh, directed the uh, Mercury Theater on air, 
and this is where he re, uh, he did a radio adaptation of H.G. Uh, Wells' novel, The War of the Worlds. And so, um, basically, they mimicked a news broadcast, and um, it sounded really, really realistic, but they were reading World of the Worlds on the radio in 1930, on the night before Halloween, and people actually believed that this was an actual event that was currently happening. People believed that um, that there was a, um, a Martian invasion underway in the United States, and people believed that it was actually happening, and it created a lot of panic. Enough panic to the point to where they actually burned down the broadcast station. Um, um, and it, uh, they, they say, causing between 6 and 20 deaths. Um, and other countries had also experienced the problem um, when they broadcasted this story. So they're reading World of the War, Worlds and talking about an alien Martian invasion, and people are like, what the hell is going on? What's happening? These things from you know another world. And it turned into a big, giant, widespread panic of these foreign creatures because nobody had that like, concept of what this was Yeah, I, um... before. Around the same time as well, which I don't know if it was before or after this broadcast as well, but um, it, at least in the in the U.S., I want to say. But so I have an uh, astronomy book. I took a, an astronomy class when I was in college, and uh, you know it, it talks about you know of course you know different types of stars and the planets and their moons and everything. Um, but one of the things they actually talked about as well uh, on the the topic of Mars was there was an astronomer who had or i guess it was multiple astronomers had actually like looked at mars in the the telescopes they had at the time and had claimed that they saw uh like cities and like vegetation and flowing rivers on mars so uh during that that whole time period there was a, a general belief that like mars was an actual like living breathing place and there was a, a civilization on mars and i think that might have actually like added to the you know the the fear and and panic kind of aspect of it because i as far as like the general public was was concerned which i don't know if to what extent but uh, my understanding is it was a pretty much a general understanding that there were other people or another you know civilization on mars at that time so you know of course we know yeah. we know better now or maybe there was something on mars at the time and it's since dried up we don't you know we don't really know but um that was that was the general belief at the time yeah, well, I think we do know. I mean, as we talked about uh, some, uh, some, you know, Mars on an earlier podcast. I mean, we've been, we've had, you know, s satellites and stuff like that around Mars uh, well before the two thousands, and and uh, some of the actual imagery satellites and data collection satellites in the two thousands. Um, so for you know about twenty you know plus years, you know, we've been observing Mars, and it's just a big giant planet of rock. You know, um, we've got plenty of, you know, video evidence of that. Unless the government has found something like that and has chosen to, you know, hide. And we are purposely exploring the desert of Mars because we want everybody to believe this conspiracy that, you know, Mars is just a big giant rock, you know, red rock planet. Um, but uh, who knows? I mean, we can believe whatever we want. And, you know, that's the main point of... Uh, of you know what we had just talked about you know whether it's through religion or whatever um or believing that there's something out there higher aliens or not or that martians are attacking you know because that's what the radio said you know we we can choose to be believe whatever so, yeah we want to. talking about that i'm kind of interested to uh, what, like what do you what do you guys think about the whole like the ancient alien theory do you think it's just all like a bunch of bullshit? Which I think a lot of it is, but I think there is a, like some truth in there. Like, what do you what do you guys think about that? Um, so one thing my wife is quite adamant about is is, is taking credit away from from what humanity was capable of, especially with like the Egyptian stuff. She's a big big nut for Egyptian history. So, like, you know, a lot of people just go, you know, oh, that was alien. There's no way mankind could have built a pyramid like that. I mean. Yeah, you can. I mean, look at some of the other achievements that we have, you know, that humans have done. I mean, yeah, that that's a pretty big one, and it's still standing. But, like, I don't know. They've, they've now since found out how they did it. It was a lot of hard work, but, you know, it's still possible. 
you know um that's not really your question though ricky it's just when we talk about like structures yeah. and things like oh yeah aliens built that yeah, i don't know I, I think i think we had enough time in our hands without the internet before uh tv existed that we could have built some shit like that but like as far as like religion influence and things like that um you know i, I kind of err on the side that that's just human nature you know, we want rules. We want explanations. We want to understand why things are the way they are. You know, that's why we have the theory of ghosts. You know, oh, I don't know what that is. It's yeah. spooky. Well, it's got to be a ghost. You know, um, I, I just I feel like aliens are kind of one of those those catch all things that we just throw into. Uh, you know, if we don't understand something, well, if it's scary, it's a ghost. If it's extraterrestrial or paranormal or, you know, from outer space, it's aliens, you know, Um it is interesting to note, though, in a lot of, I guess, ancient texts, sounds like a really pompous way to say this, but in a lot of, like, older books and things like that, there are images of, like, stars, glowing things coming out of the skies and people, you know, looking at them. Or I think I've seen a couple where, like, it looks like yeah. what we envision a UFO to look like sitting in, like, a castle courtyard. And it was it dates back to medieval times. So, like, like that kind of stuff, like, yeah. Like, why why if if th that sort of thing did exist why would they only come around now you know um if you've got interstellar ships why you know that isn't something you came up with in the last you know thousand years it's something you've had for a while um so yeah i, I yeah and okay so you just made me think of something and i'll i guess i can bring that up here in a sec but mike yeah what do you what do you think about it so, yeah, um, I believe, well, one, you guys kind of just answered my question that I had, you know, do, is, could this possibly be a scapegoat? Um, and Chris, you gave a, you know, phenomenal explanation, uh, explanation on, on why, but, but um, I, I don't necessarily believe in the ancient, you know, UFOs. I mean, Chris, I mean, your, your perspective is pretty much my perspective is, is, uh, um, there are some unexplainable things, you know, um, on like artifacts and like things that look like what we believe or have seen as a UFO or some weird looking things that are, un you know, unexplained. Um, but then also I, I do believe that, you know, that we do, we do unfortunately limit ourselves and what we believe we are actually capable of yeah. doing. Um, you know, and, and there's so much evidence behind that to, to, to prove that. I mean, we really true do truly do not understand the power and the capability that we have within our brains and our minds and our capabilities. And we like to sell ourselves short, um, on so much of that. So I, that, that's why I, I don't, I, I don't necessarily believe, um, I, I believe that one, we are negating a few things, especially when it comes to ancient uh, aliens or technology and stuff like that is one drugs are a very powerful thing all right um and i understand that we live in a culture today that pretty much makes drug use super taboo and i can understand why you know we 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 don't have a culture where everybody's just taking meth you know, and we don't have a culture where everybody's taking cocaine. But if you look at the Germans in World War One and how how they were able to you know function and take over, they were I believe it was uh, meth. It was a uh, uh, a substance that they were taking from you know Nazi Germany that they had created, and they basically turned these people these soldiers into super soldiers, and they were able to function for days on end. And, and uh, we found this out, you know, later on how they were able to basically just wipe through France um, just so quickly, yeah. you know. But, you know, the whole entire point is, you know, we, you know, these old cultures, you know, ayahuasca, that was a big thing, you know, and it still is a big thing. And if you look into DMT, you know, which is a main one of the main drugs in that, you know, and what that does for the human mind um, it is a big thing. Seeing visions, unlocking things, talking to other yep. beings. You know, this is something that was a big thing in cultures, you know, in the past. Um, you know, opio uh, opioids, um, all these other things. You know, I do believe that drugs were a big thing in these cultures because it wasn't, 
you know, it, you know, like as we have today, we have laws and legislation and all this crap that says you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't do this. Well, they didn't, I wouldn't say that they didn't have that, but those things were a lot more open. I mean, I don't know if you guys have smoked a joint before, you know, weed, but, uh, you know, having done some, you know, it, it's, it's a fun, you know, drug to partake in. And if you take enough of it, you can hallucinate, you know, I have, um, and, and I've seen some crazy wild things, you know, and same thing with people that I've never taken shrooms and I just hate mushrooms in the first place, but I've heard some crazy stories of people seeing some crazy things happen while on shrooms, you know, and, uh, one of my favorite stories is he was sitting at, he was in Amsterdam and he, 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 he got some shrooms, um, from this place in Amsterdam, sat down and was having like a cup of coffee and he was sitting down and it was like a wooden table and, uh, like one of those like fancy, you know, like they take like a tree and they just cut it in half so you can see all the rings and whatnot. And, and he's explaining this. And when he took it, he basically was, um, uh, he watched basically like armies happen and, and like basically like these like little army things or something like that come out of the wood and they had like a big giant war on top of this table you know so his brain on the aid of shrooms then projected this war that was happening on this table and he was completely just blown away hmm. um at what was happening but that was real to him because of these you know hallucinogenics that he had in the system and you know he had mentioned some other stories too but you know i definitely do have to say like we can imagine the craziest things just on our own or even with the aid of any type of hallucinogenic um or a drug you know if you think about you know the crazy dreams you had when you took percocet or oxycotin for you know a surgery if anybody has you know, I've had some crazy dreams on those things. Um, you know, when I broke my hand and, uh, um, it, you know, things that, you know, like how, how do you explain? How do you even think about that? You know, things that, you know, you dream that you've never seen, never, you know, have never experienced and you're dreaming about them. How? Yeah. You know, uh, so I, I definitely do feel like we sell ourselves short. Um, and don't fully understand or respect the capabilities of these previous societies because, you know, that there's just so much there. Um, yeah, I, so um, I mentioned this earlier. So, Chris, you had said something that kind of reminded me of something. So you were talking about, like, why are aliens only showing up now, you know? Um and that is actually another thing that the the CE5 movie kind of talks about. It's like, you know, why are, you know, aliens only showing up or why are they only showing, you know, from a distance? Why haven't they, you know, landed and tried to make some sort of, you know, communication or you know, treaties or, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, so, and that's one of the things, like, if, if these things do exist, like, and you were talking about, like, how we could just completely wipe out or annihilate, you know, a colony of ants, and it's kind of the same thing, you know, kind of upscaled, you know, except this time we're the ants and, you know, these advanced civilizations are humans, you know, in this metaphor we're talking about. So, but that's one of the things, like, I guess they were able to, that he was able to say is like, you know, they, they do exist. They are here and they're not hostile. Um, so they but they are concerned about our hostility. So I don't know. It's like. You, kind of a thing like you don't want to get too close i suppose so and again there's no way to prove that but i don't know i think there's some things that maybe we'll maybe we'll talk about uh, some other time that i think maybe has some some weight behind that so but i, I don't know i guess that was my yeah i mean I, I i guess if spiel if we were trying to observe another species we would probably do the same thing i mean as far as recon gathering information like that makes sense right you you observe them and 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 you figure out all the yeah. all the all the directions things could go all the angles and then you you know make contact then you engage or or whatever so yeah i mean I, that makes sense yeah i could definitely see that um i, I yeah I, it's just it, yeah i don't know it like we're just we're kind of primed to i don't know like i'm kind of i'm fascinated by aliens but at the same time i'm kind of fucking terrified of them 
Because, I mean, if something were to actually show up, like, I don't know what I would do. Like, I feel like that would be, that's like a life-changing experience, you know. And it could either be one that's almost like on a heavenly kind of level, like a religious type, you know, experience. Or it could be terrifying. You know what I mean? It's just, if they wanted to, they yeah. could they could have been wiped us out. But, you know, they haven't. So. Yeah, as, as as we talked about like last time, you know, uh, Chris had mentioned, you know, about the different types and, uh, you know, um, they had mentioned that uh, or you, Chris had mentioned that, uh, you know, even if they showed themselves right now, we wouldn't be able to comprehend it because we would basically view them in the sense of a God form um, because it would blow our mind and understanding. Um, but at the same time, as we had just been talking about before, are we really limiting ourselves? You know, the big, as dumb as it might sound, you know, like a big thing or big mentality that I have is it is what it is. And, and, uh, you, you know, I, I spent my whole entire life trying to find an answer and trying to find the answer to the answers and all that fun stuff. And, and you know, that a lot of that was spirituality. And one of the biggest breakthroughs I ever had with that was, the answer has you now we can spend you know we can go in depth about that you know on another topic of spirituality but uh you know instead of trying to find the answers to everything that we're never going to we're we're pretty much possibly never going to have the answers to the big thing is is what you believe has you you know and, and the answer has you and and that puts your mind and mentality like at rest in so many different ways it's so powerful um, instead of having to have an answer for everything and that kind of adapted and, you know, further and it's like, things are what they are, you know, you can sit there and you can take two paths to it. You can, you know, freak out about it and go, you know, far, you know, right or left or whatever on it and, you know, vice versa, you know, or you can take, you know, take another path and, you know, and, and go the extreme on the other way as well, or you can accept it right then and there. You know, and you never know really how you're going to react in any situation until you're put in that situation. But my mentality is, yeah, I could low key, you know, go into panic mode if aliens come in, or I could like, you know, gear up, grab all my guns and ammo, and you know, and and get ready for war against these aliens, or just accept that, yeah, actually they're here, cool. What 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 am I going to do about it? You know, and and just accept it. And if you do that, you know, in my mentality, you're not really going to, you know. Um, have a uh, um, huge um, problem with things if you just accept them for what yep. they are. Yep, um, and that's exactly what they. Again, going back to the CE five uh, movie, that's exactly what they what they talk about. You know, they're it's like they're not a threat. They, I mean, they actually want to to help us, but they don't want to take on the burden of doing everything for ourselves. It's like we kind of have to earn our spot amongst them. You know. And once yeah. we can kind of and get past our own squabbles with each other and really with really just coming to the terms that we're not the bully on the block, like we're not the biggest kid on the block, you know, um, like if we can get past that as a species, then, you know, I think things could really take a turn for the better for for us. It's just most definitely. Yeah, it's hard. It's probably the, the biggest thing we could do, you know. Well, everybody, um, thank you so much for joining yet again another episode of the Pixelated Porch Podcast. Um, Make sure that you tune in for part two that should be coming uh, here soon. We are going to dive into evidence and conspiracy theories on aliens um, and giving more detail about that um, on our next episode. Um, As usual, we do our recommendations, and I'm just going to recommend that... uh, um, you know, cherish life, cherish the people around you, and uh, don't forget to enjoy life and, and the people around you and the things around you, and uh, take a moment to, uh, to, to breathe and uh, observe and enjoy it. Um, but that'll be it for this episode of the Pixelated Porch Podcast. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and uh, roll that intro. This has been the Pixelated Porch Podcast. We're the friendly nerds, Ricky, Chris, and Mike. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms. Plus, we're on Twitter and YouTube. Just search Pixelated Porch.